I can go out and come back. We can't count you twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just for the record, we're uh, at the getting ready to start the Clean Air uh, Olympic Region Clean Air Agency meeting for August 10th, 2022, uh, and currently do not have a quorum. So we're going to just take a few minutes um, before we start the meeting and hope that that happens in August when it's not 100 people. And here's so, Robin. Awesome. And I have to, I'll be back in two seconds. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. We're just waiting for Jim to return and then we'll have a quorum and he can call us to order. Okay, sorry about that. The puppy demanded me to walk away. <laughs> Good times. Okay, so Robin, you're here, and now we have a quorum. Yep. Okay, great. So I'm going to call to order. I'm calling to order the August 10th, 2022 meeting of the Olympic Region Clean Air Agency. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have a good agenda today, and we have a quorum of the board. So let's go ahead and uh, do introductions for the record. Uh, I'll popcorn around the board, and then I'll go to Jeff Johnston to introduce mm -hmm. the staff. Uh, so Jim Cooper from the city of Olympia. Uh, Greg? Greg Rutherton, Jefferson County Commissioner. Joan? Joan Cathy, city of Tumwater. Bill? Bill Peach, Cologne County Commissioner. Robin? Robin Vasquez, uh, Lacey City Council. Great. I think that's the board I have. So I'll go to our executive director, Jeff Johnston, and have him introduce the staff. Okay, my name is Jeff Johnston, Work Executive Director, um, and I'm very pleased uh, to introduce a couple new names that you see popping up. Um, uh, a couple new ORCA staff we have today, uh, Nancy Wood Sigland and uh, Bryson Downs have recently joined the ORCA team. Um, Nancy on July 1 and Bryson on August 1st, uh, two new compliance members of our team. So please join me in welcoming them to our uh, ORCA team. Um, uh, during the uh, compliance uh, update, uh, Mike will give more information about them. So, but I just wanted to uh, let you know about these new names that you're seeing, and I'll ask them to turn their cameras on a little bit later as well. But um, so, in addition to Nancy and Bryson and myself, uh, Debbie Moody, office manager, is here. Odell Hadley, our senior air monitoring specialist. Uh, Mark Gooden, engineering manager. Mike Schultz, compliance manager, sitting in today for Robert Moody. And Dan, Dan Nelson, our compliance, I mean, sorry, our communications manager. And I think any ORCA staff that I'm missing? I don't think so. Okay, sorry. let's go to Jeffrey and Mike. Got to unmute. I'm um, Jeff Myers, legal counsel with Law Lyman. And, uh, and Mike Throgmorton, also with Law Lyman. Welcome everyone. And uh, so we filled the compliance staff, huh? That's great. Bryson and Angela, welcome. Uh, and it seems like maybe you sent Robert on vacation after that. <laughs> he's here, he's just, uh, he's delegating. He's, he's doing what him. managers do and right delegating. On. Good job, <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, so then I am looking for a motion to approve today's agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any uh, amendments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Jeff Myers, were you raising your hand? No, okay. You're just voting on the agenda with us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, go to chair's report. Just one item. Uh, Greg, anything from finance? I don't think so. Nope. Okay. Not have a finance meeting. Okay. Great. And then, um, so I just one item for me. So um, this month we we're supposed to do Jeff Johnston's uh, 180 day evaluation per his contract. And so I um, checked in with Jeff about that, and really the changes since our 90 day review, which was fairly comprehensive actually. We had a, a strong report from him and a letter. 
uh, from me into his file. Um, you know, that he's doing a really good job starting out in this position. And so um, both him and I feel like uh, a report for him from him about you know how what what's been going on for 180 days in the board meeting uh, would be sufficient um, and and checked in with Greg about that but wanted to just um, you know let everyone know we'll have we'll have Jeff do that during his um, report uh, under executive directors update and then if any one of you feel like we should go into executive session to 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 talk about his performance. Uh, that option is available to the board and, and you don't have to give a reason uh, to go into executive session other than to evaluate the performance of our executive director uh, and and then we can chat uh, you know uh, for for any reason so if, if you know and I think that that's it, it's a it's a it's 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 an available option for everyone and so I want to just put that out there and see if that makes sense and if you even want to chat me individually and let me know if you think we should have exec session uh, you know then I can make sure uh, that we do it, but I uh, wanted to just stop and see if that is an okay uh, process for everyone that's here today, or if you would like something different. Joan and Robin and Bill, are you okay with that? I see Robin. I'm good, I'm good with it. This Bill? is Bill. I'm fine with it. Okay, great. Okay, so then Jeff, we'll have you do that just as part of your executive director report. Great. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, that takes us to public comment. Uh, I don't see any members of the public on the call. Um, Dan, is there anything that you know of? I haven't heard from anybody and everybody that's on is identified. So. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So then that takes us to the consent agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. I'll second. Okay. Motion and a second. Are there any questions, comments, or polls? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we have a consent agenda. Thank you, everyone. And I'm going to take a moment to pause and welcome Randy Netherland from Mason County. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and then we're going to move into the hi, Randy. Hey, buddy. Sorry, they decided to use this day to create some new double activation thing. And I still am not on it. So I have to use my phone. OK, the county did this to me, not you. Oh, got it. Oh, right <laughs> on. <laughs> cool. Well, um, we're just moving into the director's report. So welcome. Okay, so we're going to go directly to compliance uh, and I'm going to go to Mike and I'm going to actually turn off my video for a minute while I deal with a puppy issue and then uh, I'll bet I'll be listening. So, Mike, take it away. All right. Hi, everybody. Filling in for Robert, trying to fill those shoes. Um, and uh, as you see, I think it's B3 on the compliant on the package that Debbie sent out. Got the typical compliance stuff with the complaints, violations, inspections. So I'll be happy to answer any questions with that if you have any. Um, aside from that, uh, burn ban season's in throughout all of our region. As of July, every county has called the summer burn ban. And uh, so that's kind of allowed us more time to do uh, inspections and other things. And which um, we also met with Randy Collins, Robert and I did yesterday. He's the fire marshal from Mason County. He's new, um, new fire marshal there. He wanted to meet and kind of learn what ORCA does. He's from California, brings a whole lot of experience to uh, uh, the firefighting uh, realm. And so it was a really good meeting there. We talked a lot about how we can help each other in cooperation and stuff. So uh, that was really good. Uh, good little reach out um, for us and for him to, uh, you know, come up with some uh, things we can do together to help each other. And then um, the most important part is we are fully staffed from the compliance standpoint at this, where we're at right now. Yes, uh, um, as Jeff said, two new people. Um, they, we had a one of our better uh, candidate polls we've ever had. Um, I've been here for almost 18, almost 18 years. And um, yeah, very good candidate pool and these guys these people rose to the top for their various experience and very experienced in certain disciplines and uh, happy to have them aboard. They're already contributing and um, I'm going to 
call on them to jump in and give a quick little synopsis of their uh, experience. And, and I'll start with Nancy because she has been uh, the she's the long term of the two ones. She's been here like five weeks or something of the two of them. So Nancy, take it away. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. <clears throat> yes. Just just checking. I uh, have a little background noise going on in this end of the office, so I might have to mute myself. It, I come from an industrial background with wood products industry of 25 years where I managed air quality permits, water quality permits, uh, trained folks. So I'm, I'm excited to join the team here at ORCA. I've known Mike for probably the 18 years that he's been here and some of the other folks as well. So anxious to keep moving forward. All right, wonderful. Yeah, she's uh, been um, involved with some of our sources, so she she knows them very well, and uh, we'll um, utilize that expertise uh, as often as we need to. Um, okay, Bryson, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I'm Bryson Downs. I worked with the uh, asbestos abatement industry for about eight years total uh, for about four years of that was actually in the field as a supervisor. Um, so I'm here to assist Orca in their asbestos program as much as I can and uh, share my expertise in that field. Yeah, welcome. And we, we've already had him out. He went out with me yesterday on a site and bring some good experience and some good insight into the, uh, the work behind the asbestos part of it. So Again, great uh, experience. Uh, uh, good to have some good, good, well-rounded people, um, good personalities. We're happy that they're here. And um, that's the compliance report. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer. Questions I'd like to just, well, I don't have any questions for Mike. So actually maybe let's, let's let, let folks, if anybody has any questions, and then I'd, I'd like to just say a few things before we jump into uh, the engineering report. Okay. Okay, well, welcome again, uh, Nancy and Bryson. It's great to have you on the team. It sounds like a great experience. Uh, We're glad uh, you're here. Yes, yes, we are very much so. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, uh, we're very glad that they're here. And I just wanted to highlight the fact that we, Orca was down to inspectors for a period of time. Again, Nancy's been with us over a month and so is quickly coming up to speed. Been spending a lot of time with, uh, with, with Rob and other inspectors. Uh, but just wanted to highlight the fact that the agencies really came together. Folks were doing a lot of work to make sure that we got work done. Um, Dan was doing a lot to respond to complaints. Uh, just a lot of folks uh, chimed in and pitched in while we were down some significant positions. So great to have Nancy and Bryson with us and uh, just wanted to acknowledge the, 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 all the hard work that, that took place to get us here. Yeah, I, just, I want to second that as, as being part of the team there, that the uh, um, a small agency, it really was nice that everybody and every facet, you know, our 16 people, they all helped. Um, and I think part of that time, there was a couple of vacations in there between Robert and I. And yeah, the whole staff pitched in and, and picked up the slack. And, and that's really nice that they could, you know, we can count on everybody, everybody at the office. And so thank you to all them who are listening. And yeah, they, they deserve some kudos for stepping up. Yeah. And another exciting development is that um, as of July 1, Rob Wyland, one of our inspectors, was promoted from an air quality specialist one to an air quality specialist two. Rob joined the agency on July 1st of 2021 and has just been a great addition to the team quickly, again, learning the work. And uh, again, he's been working closely with Nancy to get her trained. And so just wanted to acknowledge uh, the excellent work that Rob has done. If you look at the compliance report and all the inspections, you'll see a long list of sources under the initials RDW, just kind of a small indication of the amount of work that Rob has done and has, has done for the agency. Yeah, great guy. In early, leaves late, uh, puts in the work, knows the right questions to ask. Um, We'll do anything we ask them and uh, comes with a lot of good background, a good long military career, uh, long to me, I wasn't serving, but uh, yeah, he's uh, brings a lot to the table. Well-deserving promotion. Awesome. Those are great updates. 
It's great to have, you know, I, that, what a great story of uh, de-siloing the organization instantly. So I, I, I think that's that's a, a huge accomplishment to have everyone rally like that. So nice job, everyone. And thank you, Mike. Sure. Okay, we're going to go to Mark. Good to see you, Mark. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good to see you too. And uh, I will direct you to uh, tab B4 in, in the board report, which uh, summarizes the industrial and commercial construction permits throughout our, our region. And uh, there's not any ones that I'd like to highlight this time, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you, you may have. Uh, <clears throat> Over the last couple of months, the engineering team has been working on permits that are in the pipeline right now and also doing a lot of business assistance uh, activities like going out and visiting some of these planned facilities, some of these facilities that, that have uh, started uh, various uh, aspects of construction but have not yet secured their permits. So operating in a business assistance mode to help guide them through the permitting process and actually just get their foot in the door with submitting an, app, an application. So much of our work has been uh, dedicated to, uh, over the last couple of months, uh, to assisting businesses submitting an application and complying with the requirement uh, in, in the Washington Clean Air Act to secure work as approval prior to construction. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I think I'll leave it at that. And uh, if you have any questions regarding any of the cases on this list, uh, please ask me now or you can, you can uh, email or phone me later. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Any questions for Mark? My video keeps freezing. It's Comcastic. Okay. Well, this is Jeff. If I could j just jump in and mention, so some of the some of the sources Mark mentioned, where we're working on business development, include a couple of the sources up in Clallam County, Bill, that I know you and I chatted about a few months ago. So again, working with them to make sure that they have the uh, resource or that they have the that we're, we're chatting with them and that they know what they need uh, from an ORCA perspective in terms of moving forward with their with, with, with getting their facilities set up. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Thank you for that addition. Anything else? Anything for Mark? Okay, Odell. Hi, sorry. No worries. Uh, I was We're never to you by 1020, so no worries. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm, I, I was caught a little unprepared, so I apologize. Um, okay, just one second here. All right, can you guys see that for the monitoring report? Yes. Okay, um, so this should be pretty quick. June and July, nothing too exciting happened in the monitoring world, which I think we should all be very grateful for, given what can happen in June and July. Um, Come on, advance. There we go. So the June air quality, you can see that we had almost 100% um, data collection and all good uh, air quality days at all of our sites. Uh, we did have some data logger failures at Lacey, which have been ongoing, but mostly resolved, I think, at this point. Um, so if you have any questions about the air quality in that, let me know. Um, and then July, we had mostly good, and we did have 100% um, data collection for July, which is great. And we did have one moderate day in Aberdeen and that occurred on July 4th. So not surprising there. Um, and then all of these other maximum sites that you see right around seven also uh, occurred on July 4th or 5th. So um, if you compare those with June, um, they're not even that different. I don't, I'm not sure what happened in Port Angeles for the 7.6, but still well within the good, so not a problem. Um, our Grace Harbor saturation study is cooking along with many, many sites. So um, still using these purple air sensors. 
you'll see once one day we had an Oakville that registered um, right over into the unhealthy for sensitive groups category and we suspect somebody was just doing land clearing burning and that happens a lot in the more rural county communities we can see that on the purple air sensors from time to time um, but very localized if you don't see it on any of the other sensors um, and then July 4th, you can see that peak that occurred in uh, several of the sites, but Aberdeen being the blue dash line and the dark blue line. The blue dash line is our PM 2.5 monitor that we use at all of our permanent sites. The other ones are all purple air sensors that have been corrected, but you'll notice that the corrected data are much lower than the reference data. And that's just because of the type of aerosol it was. So for firework pollution, it actually turns out that the purple air sensors uncorrected are the more accurate representation. Um, but I, I didn't uh, I didn't take the correction out just for that day. But you can kind of see what's going on there. Um, the rest of our sites, all very, very good air quality right down there in the, the noise. Um, ozone, still collecting ozone at Lacey. The two analyzers agree well. We even with our hot days, both in June and July, we didn't come close to that red line, which is the National Ambient Air Quality Standard for ozone. So that's great. We had some concerns when we, we got up into the 90s um, for several days in a row that can spell um, pretty high ozone values, but we didn't see those. So very happy with that. That partly is due to um, the wind. I think you'll note, you'll note that on a lot of those days we had um, a fairly good wind speed going and that that helps prevent that buildup of ozone pollution but maybe it's also because we've reduced some of the precursors and we can give ourselves a pat on the back because we want to <laughs> um other monitoring news um a couple of site visits to chica peak um, we went up for an audit with ecology and then also planning the ascent instrument installation there with the uw um, graduate student and actually I think she yeah she's a graduate student so um, so went up there to plan that out and that's going to work out really well uh, did a lot of quarterly quality control visits um, to our sites Aberdeen Lacey Port Angeles Port Townsend and Shelton happened during June and July and largely that's thanks to Rob Wyland who has also taken on part of the monitoring backup role for um, ORCA and he's been great about getting those in while he's doing his inspection. So he's able to multitask that and that's, that just saves us a lot of driving time and it's a, it's a pretty nice fit. Um, been working with our Northwest air quality forecasters on the smoke blog. So if you guys have any questions about wildfires or if you're you know, curious about what's happening with smoke in Washington state, I encourage you to uh, keep an eye on the Washington smoke blog and follow that um, from time to time because that's going to have the most updated uh, information about wildfires in Washington State. Uh, I've already mentioned the Grace Harbor Saturation Study. I do want to say that I was able to finally get our last sensor installed in West Aberdeen. That was at the request of some of the environmental activists in the community. So now we have um, a full suite of sensors all over the county, probably the most saturated of our saturation studies that we've done yet. Um, and I also installed the sensor at Blue Heron Middle School, which was the last of our permanent sites, uh, ex with the exception of Raymond. And I'm not sure Raymond is going to work out because I don't think we have Wi-Fi at that site. And then the final thing, the Northwest AirQuest summer meeting um, was June 28th and 29th. So I attended that virtually. And that is pretty much all I have for the air quality news, unless you have any questions. Questions for Odell. Odell, just a quick one. Um, I know you're working towards totally redoing the site at Chica Peak, and I wonder how that's working out with adding new equipment first. Like, are, are you, is that messing up your timing of the project? No, I don't think so. So um, we're going to be adding that new equipment. Hopefully, I mean, I have to contact UW. You know, they, they're still getting pieces, and, you know, it's always slower than you want. But it's going to fit into the current trailer and, and she brought up um, taped footprint pieces and we have it all planned out of how that's going to work out. So 
when we go to do the upgrades, the new trailer is going to house um, actually the improved site and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. And then on the rooftop of the new trailer is going to house all of our inlets and our meteorolo meteorology. So um, the two trailers are going to sit side by side uh, and, and we'll be able to access the rooftop platform from inside. So it's not going to be, we're not going to move all of our stuff to the new trailer. We're going to move the improved stuff to the new trailer. So the only tricky part is going to be when we have to move our trailer so that we can get rid of all the junk. Um, I suspect we'll have to put a lot of our analyzers and stuff on the floor of the trailer for shipping or for, it's just going to move down the hill, not very far, but okay. we just want to make sure everything's secure. But it should, it, you know, we'll be down for a couple of days, but I don't think it's going to impact other than that. Okay. And that wouldn't be till next summer. So we'll be doing that next summer. Awesome. Okay. And that was my next question. So maybe, you know, when you kind of get to a final design and timeline, could you, you know, give us a little bit of a briefing on that and show us the design and stuff? Well, sure. And uh, is Lynn's not, Lynn's gone today. Is that correct? Is Lynn here today? Uh, no, Lynn is not here today. Okay. So uh, Lynn and I are going to meet next week to discuss the request for proposals for the new trailer because of the cost. And I, I believe that's going to have to go through the board, oh, but cool. that's why I was hoping, Lynn, I think Lynn said that that would have to go through you. So you guys would have to see and approve it, I think. Is that correct? What's the cost? Uh, it's going to be around, it's going to be up between 80,000 and 90,000 dollars. So, okay, so yes, I so that will, that, that will, that will require board approval, I believe. Okay. I mean, we already have the money from EPA specifically earmarked for that, but I think that still has to go past the board, correct? Because of the yeah. size of the contract. Because of the size. Yeah. I think it's, it's anything over $75,000, I think okay. needs board approval. So yeah. And I just got, uh, the copy of the contract or the, the request for, for proposals from Ecology that they used when they purchased a new shelter. So um, hopefully we can just kind of reuse that as a template for what we're going to do. Cool. Um, and then the other contracts are for, you know, upgrades to the site itself, hauling away the junk and, and putting gravel on the road and, and giving us a nice smooth um, plat, like either gravel or concrete platform to put the new trailers on. So. I don't think that contract's going to be very much, maybe ten to twenty thousand. So that may be another one that comes past you guys as well. Okay. So I'll have right, to yeah. check with Landon. Okay. Yeah, at some point, a, a high-level overview of the whole project would be great. But you know, when you're ready, it sounds doesn't sound like it's eminent. So nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have it all. I just you know, I I, I want to get the the bids out and you know get that straightened out so we know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, okay. Great. Somebody, I think Carolina Carol, you... has her hand up. Carolina, you have your hand up. There you are. I saw you unmute, but I don't hear you. It says she's still connecting to audio. So maybe oh. she's having some audio. Can you hear me? There you go. Okay. Um, Thank you. Um, my question was in regards to the Rochester fire that just happened recently. And uh, there were 50 acres that were burned. And what can we see with those numbers? Is it going to be affecting it or? Uh, do you have the dates of that fire? Somehow I. It was. It was semi-recent, I think like a week and a half to two weeks ago. Okay, so sometime I'm going to just... I wonder yeah, if that's I, your I... Oakville spike. No, I yeah. think that it was it was more recent than that. The Oakville, I, 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 that fire in Rochester, I think was, um, I don't think it's the same. And I know we had a couple complaints regarding that. So I remember having a conversation with Robert about that. And Mike, I don't know if you chatted with Robert at all about that, but... Um, but that was something that we got a few calls about because of the, I think the size of the yeah, fire. Yeah, we did. And, and we talked to the fire department about it. And I think uh, Carolina is right. About a week and a half ago, I, off of memory, I was thinking it was a, like a Friday or something, but I, I could, I mean, 
we need the exact date I can look it up. But I guess if Odell doesn't see any peak in the last week and a half or so, then it didn't have an impact, I would guess. But yeah, I, um, I think it was the I, weekend of the 30th. There you go. Yep, that sounds okay. right. I would have to go back and check. We didn't see anything in Oakville. Um, and I don't have any purple air sensors. There's no public purple air sensors uh, in Rochester or Grand Mound. So um, I can, the, the next closest one is in Tenino. So I can see if that one picked up anything. But yeah, other than that, I wouldn't have any information on, on the air quality from that fire. Thank you. Well, and one thought maybe is if anyone's talking to the tribe down there anytime soon, maybe they'd be willing to host a purple air monitor for their own benefit as well. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. And good question, Carolina. Did that get you what you needed? Yes, it did. Thank you so much. Great. Anything else for Odell? Thank you, Odell. Dan. Good morning. So uh, from my world, uh, seeing a good uptick in wood stove uh, replacement, wood stove removals, a lot of recycling jobs, some uh, a substantial number, I think, of, of ductless heat pumps going in in, in Thurston County and the Shelton area of Mason County uh, where those are qualified. Uh, so we're seeing a good uh, in fact, I'm looking at a half dozen here on my desk to process, but yeah, that it sounds like most of the equipment backlog has been caught up. So we're not waiting on new equipment for installs as much as we're waiting for uh, labor and, and time to be able to get those new products into the houses now. So that seems to be the, the limiting factor is that the installers are just having a, a still having a tough time keeping bodies in the shop or, or in the in the process of getting those that work done so uh, good good employment opportunity for you if you know anybody in the HVAC world that that's looking to change jobs uh, outdoor burning uh, again we do have six counties all under fire safety burn ban so uh, not doing a lot with that other than complaint response and now that we have a full complaint response team, uh, I can get back to some other things. And the big exciting one has been the uh, website redesign and relaunch work. Uh, so you approved the uh, budget, uh, the fiscal year 23 budget included a, a sizable investment in the Woodstow or the, the website redesign. We hired a contractor, the Rhizome Collaborative, um, and they've hit the ground running as soon as even before we got a contract done, they were were diving in uh, both feet forward. So uh, they've done some great front end work. Uh, and I, I included in your board packet a few of the slides they presented to us uh, as a result of their research, uh, talking to stakeholders, doing some individual interviews with staff and others and then a survey of staff and other stakeholders. And I think the board all had the opportunity to respond. And I know several of you did respond to that survey. So uh, you can see kind of what, what came out of that, that, that people want to see the website be organized, efficient, uh, informative, helpful, attractive, uh, easy to use and engaging. Uh, I, I think some of the most pertinent stuff is, uh, some of the uh, success metrics that, that came out is, you know, if we stop getting phone calls from people saying, where do I find this or how do I do X, Y, or Z? So if, if we can make it easier to uh, get people to the appropriate places on the website, that would be helpful. And then the other big thing that came out of the research was uh, we have, and, and we knew this, uh, we have some huge deficiencies in integration of our database. So we have online forms to make it easy for uh, residents and uh, businesses to uh, get the information they need to submit the, the forms they need to submit. But on our end, we had a disconnect between the website database 
and our core agency database. So we had, we or we have currently a process where frequently a lot of our digital forms have to be printed out and that information re-entered into our core database. So we're going from digital to analog to digital and frequently then back to analog as well. So it goes into a paper file this because that's still our practice. So uh, we have come up, uh, the Rhizome Collaborative came up with uh, some great tool options as a add-on and an addendum to our contract where they can restructure our online forms and database and map our database, our online database to the fields within our existing database. So we'll be able to integrate better. So um, we just worked out an addendum to the contract and got that signed. So uh, a few thousand, I think 6,000 extra, uh, but that 6,000 investment now will save incredible, probably 10 times that down the road. Uh, and by doing it now, we can do it for substantially less and integrate it into the redesigned work. So, and one of the, the key factors of that is Rhizome can, can code it and create the form uh, fields and form factors so that down the road, our staff then can create new forms and integrate them ourselves. So it's basically laying the groundwork now to save a lot of time, energy and, and cost down the road. So again, really exciting. This is a great company to work with. Ended up, we hired the same contractor that did the Spokane Regional Clean Air's website, and uh, they worked with the Washington State Firefighters Council, I believe, and, and some others. So they've worked with with government agencies, uh, and they're they're proving to be really uh, efficient and effective at what they do. So. Yeah, I just wanted to echo what Dan is saying. I'm, you know, just really excited about the work that's being done on the website. We had a, uh, so Dan and Debbie and I met with them yesterday. Saw some initial kind of structuring how they're thinking about organizing the site, um, and just really pleased with this effort. And as Dan talked about, also uh, integrating the forms on our website directly with our database is going to be <laughs> a huge uh, a step forward for the agency and a big time saver. So we'll with all the time that gets spent um, re-entering data into a database. I'm sure we'll build a thing. So think of lots of better things to do with <laughs> our time. Yeah, that's huge. And you'll save trees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah, it's towards moving towards record. I mean, obviously there's records management implications. And so how do we again move toward more electronic records away from paper hard copy records? That's awesome. Any questions for Dan? Greg? One, one quick comment. I just hope that we can work on SEO with the new website so I can type in Orca into the into Google and I can find our website. Yeah, so they, they are very good at SEO. We're gonna do some social media integration as well. And, and they've got a social media a professional on staff. So we have a team of about six or seven people at the Rhizome Collaborative that that's helping us. So they've identified or together we've identified a lot of different aspects that we want to work. But yeah, SEO is top of the, the list. Really exciting work. Thank you. Hey, Dan, what were, were, were you going to mention? Were you going to mention Harbor Days? Yeah. So that was the, the next thing. Uh, talking to Jeff and and honestly I, I knew there was an event on Labor Day weekend but I've never attended so I, I wasn't sure what Harbor Days was when he mentioned the name to me and then it's like oh yeah the big free event that weekend that I avoided and stayed in Puyallup since I was up there on the holiday weekend but now that I'm down here and a resident of the county it's uh, looking at it it's a great event and so we're gonna for the first time have a booth at Harbor Days uh, we'll be, we've worked with staff and got uh, people signed up to staff that booth Friday night, uh, as well as Saturday and Sunday during the whole run of the, the show. So uh, swing by, uh, we'll be uh, just a, a basic 10 by 10 booth out at the plaza, I think it's called, at the, the far end over by the farmer's market. And 
where there's several other nonprofits and agencies out there, uh, a lot of water quality and, and uh, fish and sound folks. So uh, we'll be good match with our neighbors and, and uh, yeah, it, it should be a good way to, to get our face out in front of the local community and uh, have some fun talking and a great way to get our new employees out there too. I know, I, I think Nancy is definitely signed up. We'll make sure we get Bryson out there if we can uh, <laughs> and get away from his, his new family member. Uh, so uh, yeah, that'll be good. And then I think Jeff will fill you in on the work we're doing on the uh, Lacey Olympia Tumwater recreational burn issue. Oh, that's awesome, Dan. I, when you're talking, I had a vision of us having a little boat downwind from the tugboat races with the purple air monitor in it. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be informative, I think. Maybe it we'll, really would. <laughs> yeah, find a drone and have it fly wood around right in front of them <laughs> or behind them. And then yeah, we're we, also we, we, looking we, at some of the, the small local farmers markets and just being out to those on on an afternoon. A lot of like the city or the Tenino and Yelm have small farmers markets. Uh, I know Shelton does, but they are restricted only to farm produce and arts and crafts. So they don't do informational educational work there. So, uh, but a lot of the small communities have farmers markets. So through September, we'll be looking at getting out to some of those so we can talk about uh, fall burning issues and, and asbestos demolition. Yeah, Randy, just a second, Jeff, had a comment I want to make sure we didn't lose if, if, if it was relevant. Oh, well, I just wanted to make sure, again, emphasize what Dan said in terms of Harbor Days and, and certainly any board members, but particularly perhaps the Thurston County board members. If you all are around, uh, around Labor Day weekend, stop by, see the ORCA booth, um, chat with your constituents along with us, answer questions, meet ORCA staff. Um, again, it would be great to have you come by if you can. Awesome. And if you want to help staff the booth, we're looking for two staff or, or two volunteers each hour. So <laughs> feel free to go. stop by and hang out for a while. Public opportunity for politicians. Boy, people might take <laughs> you up on that. <laughs> Randy. The Shelton Farmers Market does allow stuff like that. I've been there myself uh, representing uh, uh, 5XL pet food banks and the like. I've been there representing... Uh, uh, the vaccine clinics to be able to get information oh. out to people and, and, and like if you need help uh, getting connected, uh, I would be more than happy to call the lady or I see her once in a while and see if I can not help you get connected. I think it is important to get out there. Not for me. I believe me, I'm not there enough. <laughs> but if, if you ever needed me, that's a different story. I, I just I don't made... need any of that stuff for political purposes. I found for myself that is my strength is that I, if I'm there, they can count that I'm there for the right reason. If I'm, if I show up for political stuff for laughs, then I'll get in trouble later. I guarantee it. <laughs> See, you made my joke too real, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I might give you a call later uh, this week, Randy, because I did get an email back from them saying they did, didn't allow our type of our booth. So we'll, it, it's good to hear that they do allow that. So. I'm sure Mike could show up and find her. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, Dan, I had a question about the database integration with the website. Is that going to, you know, extend the life of the database or reduce the need for replacement sooner than later? How, do you have an understanding of that yet? Mm, it, it won't affect the the need to replace the database. And it's really, so our, our core database is really two components when we talk about it. The back end where the data resides is a SQL database. So that's a modern repository site. The problem is the front end is the input side is access. And so that's where the problems lay and, and the, the need for replacement lies on that end. So because our back end is SQL and our website databases are in SQL, that's why we can map those. So we're doing it from the back end instead of the front end integration. That's fascinating. Okay, interesting. I did not know that that detail. So thank you. So the database project remains a high priority, and so it's something and uh, that we're that I'm you know looking at launching in the coming months. But it's uh, but yeah. So that this will. The, 
this this doesn't really do anything in terms of the of extending the life or I mean it just it makes it, it will it will s significantly streamline Orca's efforts, but it it doesn't really do anything related to extending the life of or um, extending the life of the database. Right. So yeah, and I and I say for folks that don't do data, just uh, my analogy would be. You know, you have a really sophisticated backend where the data lives, but the the interface that our staff are using is like Windows ninety five. Yeah, and that's <laughs> almost literally what it is. That's yeah. how old Access is. So. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, we'll make, keep an eye on that, and and when you know, I think that there's a lot on our plate, but when the timing is right, we should get to that. Okay, thank you, Dan. And then a uh, quick, Jeff, before I turn it over to you, I just wanna make sure Randy and Carolina are in the loop on what we talked about at the beginning of the meeting around your evaluation. Um, so uh, we were supposed to do a 180 day uh, check-in with Jeff um, and, and that's this month. And so when I talked to Jeff and Greg, uh, you know, business is very similar to what it was at our 90 day review. Uh, we were supposed to do an informal and we did generate a letter for his file um, talking about the the stellar review that we gave him and so he's going to update us and if anybody on the board he's going to update us now during his report uh, on the high level of the document he included in the packet and uh, if any of you would like to go into executive session for any reason um, you know that's our prerogative as we evaluate the performance of our of our one employee so um, let me know either you know when he's done or in the chat and we can have executive session if anyone needs it. Um, and then uh, we all agreed that that was okay at the beginning of the meeting before you two join. So um, it, does that make sense and any, any concerns with that process? No concerns. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Take it away, Jeff. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. Um, so first I'll just go through the updates. I was going to go through for the just executive director updates and then I'll circle back and give you some more high level thoughts on my first six months with the agency. So first, um, before jumping to my updates, a few things I wanted to pass along from uh, Lynn uh, from the administrator, Administrative Services Manager update. Lynn is, is on leave a lot of this week, um, so glad that she's doing that. And so I said I'd pass along a few updates. First, an update on uh, ORCA payroll processing. So we have successfully transitioned uh, from Thurston County to ADP. Uh, this was a lot of work um, for Lynn, <laughs> um, a, a, a lot of stress, frankly, but everything is, is done and everything working fine. We made that transition as of July 1 and everybody got paid uh, at the end of July as, as expected. So um, it all went, went well. Um, but Lynn did want me to specifically mention again the support. I think you know from Orca's inception in 1968, we've been with Thurston County for our payroll support. So for more than 50 years, um, really support, really appreciate the support from the county on that. But um, but it was time, you know, for financial reasons to look elsewhere. And so, but very excited that that transition has happened and that Lynn can focus on some other things. Um, one of the other things that she's focused on is she did in, in the last week complete the fiscal year 22 year end. Um, and so there will be a finance committee meeting in September where she will present that and we'll talk more about that at the September board meeting. But just very quickly, the agency did end up in very good shape. There was, uh, we're putting almost $178,000 back into our general fund, um, primarily due to um, ex uh, in more than expected uh, fines and penalties. There was also some vacancy savings from a couple positions being vacant for a while, but but anyway, so more money to invest in things like the database and other investments that we need to make. So good news there. Um, uh, other thing Lynn wanted me to mention is we do still have one vacant space in our building. As she mentioned, probably back in uh, May or June, we had a couple tenants who were leaving. We did quickly rent the small space, but we do have uh, one of our bigger spaces, 935 square feet available um, that we're, we've got it on Craigslist and a variety of other places. So. Uh, Dan, do you think you could put the link for the maybe the Craigslist uh, link in the in the chat for folks? I can do that, and it's also Great. on our homepage. Uh, yep. And we just renewed again, but yeah, yep. I'll share that. It's also on. I think it's called LoopNet, which is, I think, the 
Zillow commercial side and a couple other sites. So, but certainly if you have any leads, know anybody who's looking for some nice uh, office space uh, on the west side of Olympia, um, have them look at our space or have, have them talk to Lynn or myself. Okay, the other thing, uh, an another thing I'll mention, um, uh, as of August 1st, Debbie and team sent out almost 700 invoices to our registered and AOP sources. So big, a lot of effort that goes into that uh, in July, those all went out and actually the payments are rolling in. We've already gotten uh, close to 80, I think have already come back in. So more than 10% already paid, but that's a big effort uh, on in, in July every year. So I wanted to acknowledge that. Um, uh, there's been a lot of focus on hiring and we already talked about Nancy and Bryson having them part of the team. Uh, we also brought in a part-time uh, building and grounds maintenance technician in July. So uh, that position, you know, part-time position for the agency had been vacant for quite a while. Um, but so we hired a gentleman named, Dan, named Dave Nelson, not Dan Nelson, Dave Nelson. Um, he uh, comes to Orca with a broad range of relevant experience. He managed a facility known as the Pilgrim Furs Conference Center up in Port Orchard for 12 years. So lots of maintenance and landscaping experience. Also, he's a substitute teacher uh, in uh, Tumwater, Olympia, and Tenino school districts. Um, so since joining us in July, Dave has been really busy, primarily on the outside, getting the Orca grounds in shape, um, and then soon be changing his focus to sort of working on just little things around the building. Nothing super pressing, just routine maintenance and upkeep. But again, it's really nice to have Dave on board and uh, have somebody in that position. So when we do have things that need his attention, we've got somebody to work on them. Um, and also on the, in the hiring realm, uh, as you probably remember, the fiscal year 23 budget included uh, uh, funds for a 17th position, a record specialist. So I've been working with Debbie to get that position description done, and we're hoping to get out for get that out for recruitment uh, probably next week. So um, let's see. We've already talked about the web it, update. Yes, just real quick before you go yes. too far on the um, facilities staff member, it, because I, we haven't been around. Have we been able to do the landscaping upgrades to Fran's picnic area? And and if so, did we send her pictures? Uh, well, we have. So we've. I mean, the 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 tree was beautiful this spring. Lots of lots of blooms. We did purchase a picnic table. So Dan got a picnic table out there. So we've got a nice area for for folks to take lunches or take breaks. Um, I mean, we haven't done much other landscaping out there other than now regularly mowing it and uh, and and keeping it uh, looking nice. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if we've been in touch with Fran about that. Yeah, I, I did send oh. Fran pictures of that. Okay. Okay. So she, she was appreciative of that. Thank you, Dan. Great. Thanks, Great. John. Okay, um, well, uh, earlier Dan gave, uh, just briefly mentioned um, uh, the, 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 the recreational fire, recreational burning issue in Lacey Olympian Tumwater that we've talked about um, at uh, May and June, I believe. So, uh, so conversations around that are progressing. Um, as you probably remember from the discussion in June, we said that, well, from June through roughly October, that uh, ORCA would be working to have conversations with stakeholders about that. So we've met with a lot, had conversations with a lot of different folks. Um, had a meeting with uh, Lacey Fire Department uh, staff or Lacey Fire Department, including Chief Brooks and a few other folks from the city of Lacey. That was back in June. Talked to Kevin Bossard, uh, Olympia Fire, Brian Hurley, Tumwater Fire. Um, had a meeting. So Dan and I joined a city manager's meeting uh, last week, I think it was. Uh, so talked to Scott Spence um, and John Doan. Unfortunately, Jay Bernie was out that day. So looking to connect with him. Um, but again, it was a good conversation with Scott and John. Um, uh, also, um, you know, again, I've had conversations uh, with Joan, with Robin, with, with you, Jim. And so um, basically, the, there's some initial the, sort of a summary of what we're hearing, the conversations, or there's some initial questions about what we're doing and why, but kind of once we explain why we're doing this, the fact that essentially from an air quality perspective, there's no longer a need for this, that it's going to really simplify our messaging, and that it Again, this is an air quality issue. It's not fire safety or others, and it has nothing to do with with uh, any restrictions related to fire safety. Where we we get a lot of support, and really, 
frankly, what we hear from folks is that it's just not a re really a very big issue and kind of a suggestion or you know, one piece of advice we've heard from a few folks was, well, let's not make a bigger deal of this than it actually is. And so, again, I think the conversations are going well. Dan and I are working on putting together a communications plan, kind of outlining all the various steps on this. And then Dan is also working to put together a, a one-page focus sheet that just highlights our the, what's the message on this, why are we doing it, why do we feel that this is no longer uh, a needed I need a regulation and so on. And so hopefully we'll have that uh, completed and ready to share in the coming weeks. Um, the next step, uh, next series of efforts, I think are gonna be focused on some key stakeholders, homeowners associations and some others, but certainly um, if anybody, particularly Lacey Olympia Tumwater folks have suggestions about who all we need to talk to, let us know. Um, and then I think probably a meeting, I'm thinking maybe towards the end of September, but where we get a subcommittee of the board, Robin, Jim, Joan together to meet with Dan and myself, just to kind of talk about this. We can share what all we're hearing, um, answer questions you have, and we can talk about next steps, how to bring this back to the full board or kind of other, other things. So let me pause there and see if there are any questions or suggestions kind of about those conversations. Looks like Robin, you've got your, oh, I, I, I that's a thumb giving up. Thumbs a thumbs up. up. That, okay. that approach sounds good to me. I know that you spoke with some of the folks out here in Lacey. And so thanks for your work. And I look forward to hearing more. Okay. Great. Yeah. And I'll just appoint that subcommittee now under my purview as the chair. I, you know, it might, it might make sense to have one person from outside of Thurston County because it doesn't make a quorum. So if anybody would like to volunteer to sit in on that conversation with us, just so we have, uh, you know, sort of a, 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 an objective viewpoint. Anybody interested? Should we just do it? I mean, if you if want, I'm absolutely. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Randy. No, no, no. You go no, ahead. No, no, you first. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take it, I'm down. I I was only waiting until nobody else spoke, so I got in a little early. You go right ahead, Greg. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think either one of us, Jim, you uh, would be uh, happy if you want someone from outside of the uh, of Thurston County. So I'd be happy to do it. Okay. Thank you. I'll add Greg to that committee and Randy will get you next time. <laughs> okay. I'd like to have a ask a question about this. After um, the conversations with the police, uh, I mean, the fire chiefs and, and different members of our staff and, and city administrators and so forth, um, it seems to me that the, the, the part of the job is, is going to be not that our that orca has changing the rules it's going to be how we as cities interpret how that rule has impacted us saying no to burning in you know sitting around your fire pit and so well, that seems to be the issue because once orca decides that it's no longer an issue it's all about what the cities do and I think some coordination here, because it would be too bad if one of us decides we, we want to keep the rule and you can't. Now that's where the conversation is, could get sticky with you, is that Olympia decides to keep the ORCA rule, which now has become part of their city um, rule. And uh, Lacey and Tumwater go ahead and say, we are lifting this restriction in our city. And so, I've just thought about that, um, Jeff, after our conversation, that I think you've kind of got down your good work and publicity you want to do about why this thing was even on the books and why the cities all went ahead and adopted what we have. And now we're going to make a change because you've already made your change. So anyway. So so I guess a question I have there is have any of the cities, I mean, I, I think the cities have just been implementing and adopting the ORCA regulation. I don't think any cities have actually taken the ORCA regs and, and adopted them into, into municipal code. I don't know about municipal code, but we've adopted it into that's a regulation in our cities. I mean, um, we, we, we simply don't, in Timwater, we, we don't allow it. And I don't know how it's in our code or it's, if it's just that we say that 
that's Orca's thing. And so we're going to go along with that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking the three cities are going to have probably some different ways about letting, letting our constituents know, letting our people in our cities know that this rule has been lifted. Yeah, Joan, I, I think that my sense is that it will be this, the policy, whatever we end up with will be the same for all three cities. And if a city wants to do something different, they might be able to, but I actually don't think that we have the authority to go into that level of, of, of regulatory overlay. Maybe we do, but, 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 but to your point, how, if there's a change, how we roll it out to our customers and constituents and right. how we tell the story has to be on the same. And, it, and so making sure that we do that, if we make a significant change, I think it's a really good thing for you to highlight. So thank you. And then Jeff, you mentioned to me that, uh, the, 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 did you say this rule doesn't apply to the UGA and to the county? Yeah, that's correct. It's only within city limits. So it doesn't, yeah, so, so there's still the ban on, on residential burning within city limits and the UGA. So this is simply the recreational burning, so campfires within city limits. Okay. It's just a lot of different things we just need to be clear about. As yeah. we make <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of unmutes and I don't know the order, but I'm going to our lawyer first and then <laughs> I'll come back to the other folks. I was just gonna point out that, that each uh, individual city, uh, if they wanted to pursue a different policy from ORCAs might have uh, authority um, like uh, adopting fire regulations. Uh, they may be able to regulate for different purposes uh, and it would be something that you may want to consult with your city attorneys about to see whether or not you have adopted um, burning restrictions within your your cities, uh, similar to Orcas. Yeah, so like from for reasons other than air quality. Okay. Oh, and and there there is questions as to whether the police powers for cities. Um, whether you could adopt something that is more stringent than what is allowed, even for air quality purposes um, in your city, as opposed to uh, what ORCA is regulating. Um, uh, that, that's again, something to consult with your city attorney about. Okay. And then I, I think I'm gonna go Randy, Mike, Dan. So I myself, I just wanna point out in my opinion, uh, how the cities handle it is up to them. The question that's going to be before us is whether or not we continue to have a rule amongst ourselves that we enforce as a rule amongst ourselves. And it's up to them to decide if they want to continue to have the rule or not. If they already have it in their code, it's up to them to remove it, not up to us. We just are talking about our work, our job, and the enforcement we intend to do or not do. Um, I don't want to get confused other than that because we don't have any, we do not have the authority to change their municipal codes or whatever. It's completely up to them, their responsibility and their decision. Thank you, Randy. Mike? Well, yeah, I was just going to echo a little bit what Randy said. It's, it's from an ORCA standpoint, and I think Robert would say this, so I don't think I'm talking out of turn here. It, it's strictly an air quality issue. It's not a fire danger issue. It's the air quality Every other city in our region, even the big cities, you know, Port Angeles, whatever, the campfires are allowed. Um, it's just those three cities, uh, Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, for what reasons were said before, um, because of the SIP and the EPA, you know, trying to get the, the numbers down, which they've come down. Um, but it, from a compliance standpoint, we're the ones right now that if somebody has an outdoor burn, I mean, a recreational fire in the city of Olympia, let's say, we're the ones that go out and we would educate and educate and, and potentially, you know, if they never get the message, they could get some uh, small, it's a small little violation, but they could. If, if the three city, if ORCA lifts this from the regulation from an air quality standpoint, and then basically all the cities in, or in ORCA's region are under the same umbrella that way, um, it wouldn't affect the urban growth areas. Again, you still can't, you can still only have a campfire. You can't have more than that. You can't do a brush fire and, uh, you know, recreation. But uh, the message would be a lot easier 
if the three cities, Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, did the same thing, whatever it was. If two, and I think Joan was kind of alluding to that. If two yeah. of them say, okay, we allow campfires, and one of them says we don't, I mean, like Randy said, they have that right internally, but people are still, because for 30 years they've come to Orca about it, Orca is still going to be on that phone list of saying, hey, what's going on? We would say, you know, we're not involved in it, it's a city issue, but it would be best from a communication standpoint and just a resource standpoint on our part if the three cities were in line with whatever decision was made and that's all i got to say thank you for that mike dan yeah and, and again the cities as brandy said they can do whatever they want if if each wants to go their own way for from orca's standpoint realistically very little will change we are a complaint driven because our compliance team is so small. We don't drive around looking for recreational fires. So we respond to smoke complaints. We will still respond to smoke complaints, whether it's from a legal recreational fire or an illegal yard waste fire. Uh, if it's a nuisance smoke issue, we respond and, and address that. So that's not gonna change uh, one way or the other. Um, and then, Going back to uh, what you talked about at the, if we do move forward with this and as during the rollout, I will certainly work closely with the communications teams at all three cities on a rollout message and, and make sure I don't see us doing a big push saying, this is lifted, you can have a fire now, but just saying, cover the same things we've talked about. This is a, a third layer of bureaucracy for these cities that's no longer, it served its purpose that purpose has been met, and so the rule is no longer needed. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you for the conversation around this. Yeah, thanks, Joan. I, I wanted to go back to you anyway, because I want to make sure you got what you needed, because we just started riffing off of your question, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, it's very good. That's what I wanted to wanted to talk about and hear, hear what Randy? everybody had to say or how they'd handle it. So so now we, the three of us, know what we, what we need to work with work on right ready Thanks. yes we have uh just to clarify we only have two options that are in front of us as members of our organization all those entities uh we still need to have all the the hearings that we're going to do all the ways of handling because they all have a right to have an impact on the decisions that we make so we need them uh to be informed for that purpose so they can inform us if we choose to to make an action that takes away our regulation of such a thing we need to inform them also that we no longer will be holding up that practice so that it's up to them to decide what they're going to do after that but i think we just are simply have those two steps great thank you thank you randy so i just want to maybe make a request uh, for me it's hard to remember some of the details of this from one conversation to another and so it, it dan could you pull together like a one page that's really kind of infographic about the current situation as it applies to Thurston County, UGA versus city, city law versus Orca law, so that we can see it in one place for this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great idea. So I do have, as Jeff mentioned, we do have a communi communications plan we've been refining. I do have the focus sheet uh, draft ready. So sure. Uh, we just need to refine that, but having a, a graphic of, again, it's, I, I view this as a third level. So we've got the, the State Clean Air Act and restrictions on things like prohibited burnings and burn barrels, that's statewide. And then there's prohibitations on yard waste burning and, and land clearing burning in cities and urban growth areas and in non-UGA counties like Grace Harbor, cities over 10,000, I think. Uh, and then just in Lacey Olympia Tumwater, unique to the state, we have this prohibitation on recreational fires. So again, if you have a, a residence in downtown Seattle and you meet fire code, you can have a recreational fire. If you're in downtown Spokane, same thing. Uh, some cities in eastern Washington, and I've been trying to research municipal codes, uh, some of the cities that I've heard uh, anecdotally ha that had uh, prohibitions on recreational fires actually don't. Uh, for instance, city of Stillicum, Fran frequently told us her city of Stillicum banned recreational fires. That's not the case. Uh, they just have strict fire safety 
protocol. So I think it's a 15 foot setback from any structure, fence, building, trees. And so that alone prohibits most residences from having a fire just by having those uh, fire safety prohibitations. Uh, but I think somewhere in Colville County, there's a, a maybe it's the city of Colville itself has a fire safety, permanent fire safety, recreational fire burn, just because they've seen so much wildfire over the years. So uh, that that's some of the research I've been doing. But yeah, so having that third layer, removing that, as Mike said, then would make it easier if we're just talking cities and urban, urban growth areas, and then unincorporated county, instead of having unincorporated county, cities and urban growth areas, and then the three cities. So, and the fire departments that we've talked to have been very supportive of that, of streamlining the messaging, streamlining the bureaucracy. It just makes it easier for all of us. I like how you did that and you walked us from the tip of the pyramid down to the foundation, which is local government. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think those, that research you do is probably helpful for all of our members because of the, you know, elevated wildfire issues as we deal with the urban interface. Uh, you know, even in, in the cities around our parks and stuff, it's, it would be smart to be having those conversations about, you know, fire in general, but not, but not just the air quality piece. So thank you for, for how you yeah. portrayed that. And thank you for the in idea of a uh, infographic because that doing that, that three levels of, of bureaucracy, I think is informative and that'll help with some of the outreach too. Yeah. Cool. Anything else on this? Jeff, thanks for keeping it moving. Sure. Okay, then I've got, just got one more topic and then I'll jump into sort of the summary of my first six months. So I just wanted to mention, I'm sure everybody has seen, been following in the news, um, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, federal legislation that uh, passed the Senate on Sunday and is now waiting House action, I think on Friday. So it's uh, 755 pages. Uh, there's a lot in there. Um, a few highlights. Um, there's lots of new funding tax incentives for a wide variety of efforts related to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and frankly, there will be lots of new money available for grant programs from EPA, I'm sure Department of Energy um, and others. Um, uh, and so again, lots of money in the that relates in different ways to the work that ORCA does. And so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Um, I'm sure that will be a topic at upcoming uh, Washington Air Directors meetings, also the national organization that we're a part of, the National Association of Clean Air Agencies is gonna, I'm sure be talking a lot about this. So be tracking it, looking for opportunities for ORCA. Um, there are, uh, I mean, so some of the money that I've seen, uh, some of the, the excerpts I've seen or the descriptions talk about money to expand uh, NACS monitoring networks, um, additional money for addressing emissions from wood heating. Um, there's also, uh, an, I think as part of it, an effort to uh, we'll amend the Federal Clean Air Act to add a new section addressing greenhouse gases. So that's pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see how that kind of unfolds. Um, so, um, yeah, so anyway, more to come on this, uh, but it's pretty, frankly, pretty exciting to see this moving forward at, the, at a federal level. And I think it will underlie or support a lot of the efforts the state is doing. All right, so with that, then, uh, again, I think that's it for just some so the day-to-day -day update. So let me go back in my notes here and uh, in terms of what I wanted to say in terms of the 180-day review, um, just kind of summarizing my first six months, it's gone by fast, um, but I feel like it's been very busy and very productive, um, been focused on a lot of different things. I mean, hiring has been a key focus. You know, actually the, a couple of days before I started, real, I you know, learned that our, that the ORCA network administrator was, was leaving. So, we're, so, uh, so of course, I'm sure you all remember Nick, he left, um, couple of weeks after I'd started. So filling the IT system admin and bringing Chris Krause on board was one of my first areas of focus. Um, and again, we've got two new air quality specialists here today. So that's that's been a big effort. Um, and again, it was an effort to get those positions filled as quickly as possible. Um, I mentioned the building and grounds maintenance technician and also the record specialist. So hiring has been a key focus. Um, of course, getting to know staff and the work of the agency has been really important. Um, relationship building. Um, again, we're a small agency, big, big jurisdiction. So partners, collaborators, stakeholders, 
um, is really important. So I've met with a lot of different groups. Um, many of these meetings were with other members of the ORCA team. We met with Clallam, uh, Clallam County Board of Health, Jefferson County Board of Health. Um, at uh, the end of September, we're meeting with Mason County Board of Health. Uh, we met with Grays Harbor County Planning and Building Department. Again, I think next week we're meeting with the Mason County Community Services Department. Um, I met with uh, Gary Nelson, the director of the Port of Grays Harbor last week um, and met, uh, so Dan and I met with the executive board of Thurston County Fire Chiefs. Um, so again, just a, a partial list, but lots of, lots of meetings, introducing myself, talking about the work that ORCA does and figuring out and how we can work together. Um, on the work on the overlap that we do. Um, of course, budget development was a key focus um, during my first few months, getting the fiscal year 23 budget in shape. Um, and then, you know, again, a variety of different uh, versions that we touch chatted with the, or talked to, worked through the, the finance committee with, and ultimately bringing to the full board and getting that through the process. Um, mentioned the website redevelopment effort, um, then just a wide variety of the day-to-day -day things, um, keeping things moving across my desk. Um, but again, I think it's been a very productive six months. Feel very energized about the work I'm doing. Um, really liking, again, it's a great team. And I just want to emphasize that it really has been a team effort. I mean, I've listed a lot of things here and very few of them have I done on my own. Have I done on my own? It's really been a team effort. Um, so appreciate the rest of the team working with me on this. So that's kind of summary of the six months. What I wanted to do, and let me see if I can share my screen. I'd like to bring up the, um, give me a second here, bring up the um, performance measures that uh, we agreed on. Let's see, I figure out how to get my screen here going. Um, the right windows in front of me. So share screen. All right, there we go. Let's see Get the right one up. Oh, there it is. Okay, hopefully can everybody Jeff, now while, see my screen? But while you're doing that, I just wanna lift up Dan's comment from the chat. You know, to, to, to deal with uh, that kind of churnover in your first six months and, and get it filled, you know, that's something we didn't put in these, uh, you know, man, manage the organization and keep it going every day is not in your evaluation goals. And so it's it's just great to see how the team is pulled together to to both fill the gap and, and get those positions filled. So. Great. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so what so what I've got, which you should see on your screen are the performance measures that we um, agreed to, I think, in April. Um, and so the first one is strategic plan um, that. You know, it's something I actually talked with Jim about this, and um, because of other priorities, because of hiring, because of all the other things that I'll that I've talked about and that I'll talk about here in just a, a minute, I'm not as far along as I had hoped to be on the strategic plan, and I've kind of put this off. Um, into, and I'm hoping I've I've had a few conversations with some facilitators who we might work with, but I had hoped to buy by now to be further along, and I think this is just going to have to wait. Uh, in my mind until a little bit later. Again, I'm hoping to be able to kick this off perhaps later this fall, uh, but in terms of whether or not it'll be, you know, sort of where it will be um, in the start of the next fiscal year, we'll just have to see. It does remain a priority. I mean, I for for a variety of reasons, but one of the, th one of the reasons is you know, I was talking about the Inflation Reduction Act and all the opportunities that we're probably going to have. I mean, frankly, having a clear directive strategic plan helping us prioritize and figure out this is something that we need to prioritize because of because of grant opportunities or whatever having a strategic plan to guide our work will be very helpful in that so that's this remains a priority it's just because of other things i haven't gotten as far as i'd hoped on it um next thing is the and is is that big enough do, do folks need me to make it bigger Hearing, hearing, not hearing, it's, so I'll just leave it as it is. It's in the packet too, right, Jeff? We can yes, see it in the it packet. Is. Yeah. Yep. Um, so agency performance management, um, I've been working. So I've uh, developed a performance development plan process, again, based largely on my experience with the state. Um, so we've so developed an ORCA form and a template for that of uh, working with some 
I've got those completed for the engineering manager and compliance manager, and they're now working on them for their staff. Um, and so my goal is to have these completed for the entire agency by later this year or early, early um, 2023. So I think we're well on the way on that item. Um, salary survey, um, uh, this is something I'm working on now. I've had conversations with a couple consultants um, to work with on this. Um, and this is something I want to get, we'll need to get complete, have this done by early 2023 so that we can uh, build the results into the budget planning for next next fiscal year. And so, um, again, this is something that I want to kick off and get going here in the next uh, next weeks and, and months. So this is, that's a salary survey is a key focus right now, but I'm excited, particularly excited about one of the consultants that, 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 I, that I've talked to on this. Um, of course, the budget development item number four, I think is pretty much done. We talked about a minute, a few minutes ago. And also I think item number five, relationship building and outreach is something that, uh, again, making good strides on, having a lot of conversations with folks. I'm always open to suggestions about, hey, Jeff, you need to meet with so-and-so, or, um, you know, so please send me your, your, your suggestions about who I need to be talking to. Um, had a good conversation with Randy a few weeks ago. And so from that, um, the result is, again, on the, on the agenda for the September Mason County Board of Health meeting and also meeting with the community services program, uh, meeting with Kel Rowan and her team. So um, again, I think things are going well there. And so then, you know, there's other things we talked about the hiring. Um, hey, Jeff. There's, yep. Carolina has her hand up. You might not be able to see it because of your screen okay. share. Sorry. Yes. Good. Go ahead, Carolina. Oh, uh, I could have waited till the end. Thank you, Jim, though. Um, yeah. I just had a question about the salary survey, and uh -huh. I think it's great that you're doing it. It really is. My question is, the goal the timeline of it um I, I wonder if it's too ambitious um and i understand trying to get it into the budget but the consultants that you've been speaking with have they laid out like an estimate on the the timeline of it um i know thurston county is doing uh the same right now and um our timelines have just grown over the period so i'm just wondering um if it's yes. something that consultants have assured you. Thanks, then that's a great question. And that's definitely something I'm looking at. And so, yes, the, the two firms that I've spoke to and that I do have firm proposals from, um, roughly, it's roughly a three month process. So once, once we kind of sign the contract and get moving, of course, there'll be a process for them to gather information and then they'll um, do some analysis. But, but the timeline is definitely something I'm looking at. And in fact, I think I got the name of the firm doing the uh, Thurston County effort from Jim. I think you passed that along. And in fact, that firm, so I did exchange a few emails with her, but they wouldn't be able to start it until um, until January, which then wouldn't complete in time. But so if if we can do this in time for budget development for next year, great. But that's but that's a good point, Carolina. I don't see it as a deal breaker. Again, if if I mean, the, the important part is to find the right firm to do this work with us. And so if it's going to take a little bit longer to do the right work, then that's that's fine. Then, then we, I, that's just a decision I think that we'll have to make, that I'll have to make. That's a really good question. And I think Lynn would appreciate it if we didn't give her a big budget adjustment in the salary line item at the last minute either, right? She's going to start her budget in January, probably if she hasn't already. And, yes. uh, and it won't, uh, you know, so I, I don't really anticipate even getting to the implementation conversation before we pa adopt a budget. Now, if we see you know, the need to make changes because we're really far off, that can happen at any time in the year. And then we'd phase in the remainder of, of any other changes. So. Right. Thank you. Good question. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. Okay, well, I think that's that's it. Um, so that was so just kind of a, where things stand on my performance measures um, that we had agreed to. Again, I, I feel really good about where things are. The only thing that I think that where the might be need to push out a little bit further is the uh, is the um, strategic planning. But again, that remains critically important to me. But I just I real I realize that it's going to take a big amount of time and effort on my part, as well as members of the management team and probably others on the agency. And I want to make sure to do it right. I and mean, frankly, there's 
a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. I know about doing strategic planning efforts in ways that aren't very inclusive and that lead to a report, lead to something that really then sits on a shelf and doesn't <laughs> inform the agency and and doesn't really help. And so, and I'm really intent on making it a meaningful strategic planning effort. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's what Jeff and I talked about too, is like, it's it's important to do and do it right, but it's not mission critical today or tomorrow. Um, but but and we need it so uh, we'll we'll continue to figure out how it fits into the timeline and and the workload of being a new director is big so um, i want to before we open it up for any comments or, or questions i want to just lift up a couple of the the two comments from management team in the chat so i can get them into the record um that office morale has increased as well uh, jeff has been doing a great job we really appreciate him and his hard work uh, I second these comments. Jeff brings strong leadership, organizational skills, and ideas to Orca. Very glad to have him leading us, and you know that reflects my feeling as a board member as well. Um, so, just want to see questions, comments for our director uh, six months in. I'll just you know add on to the attaboys. I mean, when you when you have management staff coming out unsolicited like that, that means a lot. And uh, every step of the way, I've, I've really approved of, of your of your path, Jeff. So really appreciate your work so far, and and being so proactive and outreach to you know Jefferson County as well as the other municipalities. So yeah, yeah, love what I'm seeing. Great, great, thank you, Greg. Go ahead. You've got a lot of goals in the next year, right? A lot of things to try to get done to support the organization. And this is not meant to put you on the spot. I'm just curious if there was one more thing that you had the capacity to do, whether it's staff or money or time, what would what would be one more thing that you'd like to accomplish? And maybe it could be a goal for 2024. That's a great question. I mean, I, I think. I mean, I, in my mind, it's the strategic planning effort, because I think I mean, that needs to be is hopefully will then guide us, guide me and, and the agency on where do we need to be uh, looking at putting our efforts and our priorities and our, our, our focus. Um, I mean, again, with, with potential opportunities coming through, um, through whether it's the Inflation Reduction Act or other, other federal monies or state monies from ecology, I mean, I think about would it be useful to have a, a grant writer so that we, ORCA could, could uh, I mean, we, obviously, we do some grants. We've got grants to op help operate our monitoring programs. We do a lot, but but we're kind of maxed out in our capacity for that. I know Mark Gooden has a lot of uh, thoughts about grants that we could apply for. He made a suggestion the other day that having a somebody who's focused on like a, an, an energy an energy expert. Um, that that could help with our per you know consult with our permit our permittees. Um, because because energy efficiency is really important, and that will help them reduce not only criteria pollutant emissions but also greenhouse gas emissions. And so that's why there's a variety of things that are kind of out there. But uh, in terms of yeah, so I'd have a hard time coming up with just one, Robin. But I think uh, the ability to have a, a really good, really useful strategic plan that's been co-developed by the board and staff that we can all look to to help prioritize our work and where we're going to put our efforts will would be will be really helpful. It's okay to have a list too. That's, That's good. Fine. <laughs> that was a good <laughs> list too. <laughs> Great question. Anything else, Joan? Well, Jeff, you and I talked just recently and I told you how glad I was that you were here and tooted your horn about some of your skills and uh, and just how you go about your business. And, you know, everyone has different leadership styles and I really appreciate yours. And I also mentioned to you and after the conversation today, I see how um, in maybe a, our strategic planning or our dreaming for the future, I think ORCA is, has an opportunity to play a role in uh, climate change and in keeping that right up there in people's minds and using what we do and who we are and who we're becoming um, to have that be one of our one of our 
strategic goals or something about that. I, uh, I really think that's important. And I would like to have people see us as an agency that um, not only cares about that, but works on that and calls people to action. So I'm glad you're here and um, I appreciate you. Great. Thank you, Joan. Anything else? Great. Well, so I think it, 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 for if there are no other words on this and I don't have any requests for executive session, uh, then I would say that Jeff's 180 day review has been concluded in this meeting. Uh, and if he's okay with that as process, uh, we'll move fo forward to, and he's nodding for anyone listening, uh, that we'll move forward to uh, our, our next uh, checkpoint, which is his 11 month uh, review kind of coming into a full year. So that will be something we do in January. And uh, Greg and I will put our heads together to kind of make sure we have that be a little bit more formal and, and include uh, the staff as well in, in the conversation to make sure everyone has a voice. Um, and then one you know, sort of, um, you know, operational consideration in that is that Jeff and I will also work on um, kind of bringing an updated contract format around his one year too. So we wanted to uh, improve that language greatly and differently than previous contracts um, in our negotiations. And that was something that him and I agreed on that we would do around the one year mark. So uh, him and I will work with Jeff to, you know, it won't, it won't change the, the substance a lot, but, but really kind of make it a little more streamlined and an easier, easier document for everybody to, to hold each other accountable to. So um, Jeff, any final words on that? No, just uh, thanks um, for, for your support. Um, I, and again, the, I, your, your comments are, are very much appreciated and know that I'm always looking for, for feedback, for suggestions for, um, so I mean, I'm working hard. I think things are going well and, and your, your feedback is always welcome and appreciated to help. Cause I know I'm not doing everything. <laughs> I can't do everything, but if there's other areas I need to focus on that I'm not or blind spots, I recognize that I have those too, so. Well, we made a double length probationary period essentially with the 90 and 180 day review and you excelled. So I don't, I don't think there's any, uh, any, any, anything I need to do other than say you're, you're permanent, man. So I hope you're planning on be here for a long time. So. I am indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anything else, uh, executive director wise before we move to close the meeting? Oh yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so I want to hand it, hand it off to Jeff Myers. He's can give a bit of an update on where we are with a couple of legal matters. And then Jim, I thought it might be helpful. Maybe you and I take, take walk folks through the, 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 the work board work plan talk about what we've got coming up at agendas and future in future meetings would that be helpful for folks to i will i don't know i don't know if we need to do that as part of our board meeting but i would just ask that board members take a look at that at that uh work plan that was in, that be included in the packet and then if there's additional things that you would like to see on the upcoming agendas additional topics by all means let let me and Debbie know. I did notice that once one thing we we're missing from that work plan is in September we will have a hearing on the on a rule change for Rule 1-11 and 1-12, which is um, just basically adopting the federal and state regulations by reference. Um, so that's a just it will be a minor uh, kind of administrative hearing issue. So that's on the September that'll be on the September agenda. Okay. Yeah, thanks for putting that in the packet. I think it's always nice for folks to have that um, in front of them. So if anyone has any comments, just send them send them to Jeff. Yeah. Okay, Jeffrey. Okay, um, just a couple of quick updates um, uh, regarding the uh, pending litigation. This has to do with uh, authority for new source review and notice of construction approvals, who gets to issue those. Um, the lawsuit that we have been involved in directly was brought by 350 Seattle and several other environmental groups um, in King County Superior Court was dismissed this spring for lack of standing. Um, the uh, uh, 350 Seattle appealed that to the Court of Appeals. Uh, their appeal has now been fully briefed. Uh, since our last meeting, uh, the air agency submitted a brief on July 1st, and a reply brief was filed by 350 Seattle on 
uh, August 1st. Uh, it largely rehashes a lot of the issues um, that were uh, pending before the Superior Court about standing and, and whether or not this is a request for an advisory opinion, uh, but also raises issues concerning the merits of the allegation that the Clean Air Act requires board approval rather than simply administrative approval by staff. Um, we do not yet have a date for oral argument uh, before the Court of Appeals. That is the next step in that process. Uh, a very similar issue is also pending uh, before a different division of the Court of Appeals. Uh, this comes out of a case called uh, Advocates for a Cleaner Tacoma versus Puget Sound Clean Air. Uh, and this is the appeal of the uh, liquid natural gas facility that Puget Sound Clean Air approved uh, for permits in, uh, uh, in Tacoma. And the uh, Puyallup tribe filed a brief as an appellant, uh, again, making the same argument that the board has to approve and that it's invalid to approve a permit uh, at the administrative level. Um, so they're arguing that this specific permit is ultra virus and therefore unauthorized uh, and invalid. Uh, this doesn't have the standing problems that the um, 350 Seattle litigation had that resulted in that case being dismissed. So I think the, the issue is ripe and it's uh, squarely presented on the merits. Uh, Puget Sound Clean Air asked the other air agencies to uh, assist in briefing the matter as we had previously done in an earlier appeal of this in this case. Um, and uh, I'm working with the other clean air agencies attorneys to uh, file an amicus brief on the merits of the, the question as to whether or not the control officer has the authority. Uh, one of the things that we are going to point out is that the Clean Air Act, uh, when it says the board has uh, uh, authority to approve uh, orders of, uh, of approval for a new source construction, uh, it also has a, dele a delegation of rulemaking authority to the board. And this board uh, has adopted rules which expressly authorize the control officer to approve uh, those, those permits. Um, and so that is an, an issue that uh, I think we should point out to the court that uh, the Clean Air Act has this rulemaking authority uh, and you should be able to exercise that in a way which promotes uh, efficient administration of, of the permitting process and decisions according to the board's rules, not based on political accountability considerations and what is uh, politically popular. Um, so that's the, the scope of what we're working on with uh, uh, the other air agencies, uh, Northwest Clean Air, is uh, taking the lead on drafting that. Um, we hope that we're gonna have a, a draft uh, brief, uh, hopefully with by the end of the month. So that's kind of the status of things. Uh, in case you were wondering where the litigation was, um, in, in the, uh, the next step for both of these cases is conclusion of the briefing and oral argument in the Court of Appeals. Um, I think the 350 Seattle case may get to go first just because the briefing is already done there. So um, I'm thinking probably um, the December or early 2023 timeframe for uh, Court of Appeals arguments. And then you know, we're at least six to eight months out from decision. Great, good update. And there we are. Regardless of, regardless of how you feel about natural gas, this is about function of, of board decision making. <laughs> that's 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 our issue, and and we'll we'll let um, Puget Sound Clean Air uh, uh, decide the merits of of of, of their their permits, right. just like they would let us decide the merits of ours. And we appreciate that. I'm sure they do as well. Great. Okay. Any qu questions for Jeff? Okay, Jeff Johnson, any wrap up? Nope, I don't think so. Okay, 
Is there anything for the good of the order? Okay, hearing nothing for the good of the order and not having any executive session, we are adjourned until September. Take care, everyone. Good summer. Be safe. Bye, everyone. Thanks.